Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and this is part two of our stacking gnome or fairy house. In part one I showed you how I built the structure itself and in this video I'm going to show you how I'm painting the walls. So just to give a quick recap, when I first started this project I was thinking about adding clay to the inside walls and then I changed my mind and I'm just going to leave them as paper towel walls. So the structure itself is foil covered in masking tape and now I've added some paper towel and you can see that stiffens up the walls quite a bit. Once you get the bark on the outside, this structure is very strong. Okay, so what I'm using in this video, and I've never uh, really done this in a video before, so I did Google how to use baking soda and acrylic craft paint and that's what I'm doing in this video. So we're going to cover up these wrinkles and some of the seams using texture paint. But there is something to keep in mind, so when you're first watching, I'm doing the first floor down here. And I'm using antique white, and I did, this is my first attempt at baking soda texture paint. It gave me some nice texture there. When I got to the second floor, I used a darker color, and I used a little bit more baking soda than I did in the first floor. And I ended up with a film, like a baking soda film, over my walls. But it was an easy fix. So watch this video, I'm going to show you how I make the texture paint and how I fix the issue with the film being left behind. Working on the first floor, uh, the paper towel has been left overnight to dry, so very important to keep in mind. It takes a while to dry if you don't use fans. I have a little tiny fan that I stick in there and I left it overnight. Now it's the next morning and they're nice and dry and ready to be worked on. Now I'm going to do a base coat before I do any texture work. So this will just help not have to use so much texture paint in the end. All right, I'm going to mix up my texture paint and I'm going to use baking soda. But first I'm going to put this entire two ounce bottle of craft paint, this is acrylic craft paint, in my bowl. And then I'm going to put five or six teaspoons of baking soda. I did Google how to thicken the paint with baking soda and I'm using a lot more than it says to online, but I wanted some pretty thick paint. So I went ahead and just went gung ho and yeah, used five or six teaspoons there. Mix it up thoroughly and you don't want to have any powder left when you're done mixing. And here's the before, this is with the base coat. You can see all the little squares from the, from the design of the paper towel. You can also see a few seams there from my paper towel. And I'm going to cover all that now with this texture paint. I absolutely love this. And it goes on fairly thick and it dries fairly fast. Now, I'm going to be speeding up here. This is not how fast you have to go. <laughs> But you do have to work a little quicker than you normally would because it's going to dry a lot faster than the acrylic paint would had it no baking soda in it. Uh, I was able to do all four walls, uh, no problem. Just going, you know, a regular speed. I just didn't dawdle or take my time. And you can see I did some sort of uh, flicking with my wrist there, like back and forth, like a fanning motion. And that's what I'm going to do with my second coat as well. But there's the first coat. Look at that. Love it. I love the texture that this gives but it definitely needs another coat. So I'm gonna leave this dry, put a couple of fans in there, leave it dry. And this is probably an hour or so later and I'm starting the second coat now. And I'm doing the fanning motion again. And here it is a couple hours later and it's all dry and look at that texture, I absolutely love this. I will be using this technique a lot more in the future. And the big test is I can push on it and there's no cracks. And this is a relief, this is gonna solve a lot of issues for me in the future uh, when I'm painting walls that don't have anything behind them yet. Um, of course, where the walls are thicker, the, the interior wall does not move, right? It, this is just where um, there's nothing built behind it yet. But as I said, the structure is pretty sturdy on its own. The kids could play with this no problem right now. Anyways, for the finishing touch, and this is not imperative, I always add a varathane. This is a water-based varathane. And this will help in the future if I need to clean the walls for any reason, be it dust or maybe I spill some paint. It'll be a lot easier to wipe the walls off if they have a clear coat on them. All right, like I said in the introduction, with the second floor and the darker paint, once the paint was dry, the baking soda left a film on the paint. So to fix that, I just took a wet cloth and I washed the walls and that worked really well. It took the majority of the of the baking soda off of there and once the paint, or once the, um, the wet walls were dry, uh, I didn't see that film again, although there was a little bit of a hazy look to the paint. So once I washed the walls and let them dry, I just did a coat of paint without baking soda on them, and that took care of the problem uh, completely. 
So I didn't try to paint over the film. I washed the film off first, and then I added my, my uh, coat of paint without baking soda, and that worked really well. So keep that in mind with the darker colors, you could end up with a film from the baking soda, but it's an easy fix. All right, so I did the first floor about four or five days ago and it's had time to cure. So I just cut out a little doorway and I was just doing another test to see how it holds up. And you can see that, I mean, there are hairline cracks here, but nothing like there would be if this was clay or uh, drywall and there was nothing behind that paint. Um, testing this wall before I put the varathane on it. And there are little hairline cracks, but again, nothing like uh, there would be if I had put drywall on this wall. Um, again, these walls stiffen right up once you get the outside bark on, but I'm just doing this test because this is how I build, and it's nice to know that I can do these sort of things without having major issues. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Another thing to keep in mind, my rooms are quite large. They're not going to stay this way. There's going to be partitions put in here later on in the project. But I went ahead and put on a coat of varathane on the second floor, and that way, if I spill any paint or anything, I can go ahead and clean that up a lot easier if I didn't have the very thing on there. All right, my friends, that will bring us to the end of this video. I hope you found it informative. And if you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. That helps me out a lot. In the next video, we will tackle some more of the bark, and I'll show you how I paint that as well. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next one.